Good morning from South Cambridge here in the United Kingdom on week 4.1 of Starlink Ownership. Today on this episode, I've got something interesting, an obstruction test. Yes, that's right. I've done a very scientific obstruction test to see where these phantom obstructions are coming from. And then once you've watched the very meaningful obstruction test, I'm going to do a quick summary of what I think of Starlink so far. So that'll be towards the end of the video. But most importantly, I need to ask you a question, Des. Um, he still hasn't been plugged in since I've got him and he's on the firmware that he was sent with. Should I update him or leave him as an original? Before we move on to the scientific test, there's something really important I have to share with you. Yes, it's lambs jumping around the field. So the purpose of this obstruction test is that I keep getting these random red bars appear. And I think it might be whenever there's a satellite outage or a beta downtime or a firmware update. But I wanted to see if I could recreate an obstruction. So over to me on an outside broadcast. Welcome to this outside broadcast. Now, this is going to seem a little bit nuts, but I keep getting these phantom obstructions and, and you can see by my disposition, everything's clear. So I thought, what's going to be causing them? And they, they pop up and it, it appears that obstruction pops up whenever there's a, a firmware update. So whenever you get, or a, or a beta downtime, whenever you get those times, you'll often show an obstruction. Now, if you're like me and, and you know that your dish is clear, I'm wondering, and I've mentioned this before, can birds cause obstructions and of course I can't just chuck a bird in front of my dish because well it's not going to stay there long enough so I'm going to do the next best thing which is a little bit insane I'm going to fly a 2,000 pound drone over my dish at various heights and uh, and hope that I don't crash the said drone into the dish and I know many people would like to see that but that's not what this is about this is about trying cause obstructions. So let's get on with it. So as you can see the dish is at a decent height. I'm going to fly this in quite slow because I have a feeling that's about the same height as the as the dish. Oh, the drone's decided to change its mind. So here we go. I can just get it in front of the dish in its uh, line of sight. As you can see before I started this test there wasn't uh, any obstructions recorded. But I can actually show you, I'm right above the dish nearly. There we go, right in front of it. I mean, that's pretty, pretty darn close. Uh, probably closer than I wanted to be, to be honest. But let's see if that registers as an obstruction. I'm just gonna fly past and, and yeah. Well, that went quite well. So for the next one, I'm going to bring it back and fly it a little bit higher in front of the dish, just to see if that makes a difference. Let's have a look. So, fly a different angle towards our field there. Yeah, so we're having a lot of work done. It's pretty messy looking, don't judge me. So here we go, right over the top of the dish, different height. Let's see if we can generate an obstruction. I mean, a bird would obviously fly a lot faster than that, unless it was really taking the mick and trying to generally upset me. Which they do sometimes, pigeons, pigeons in particular. I think it's funny, it's not funny. Okay, I'm gonna try a little bit higher. So probably about, I don't know, 15, 20 feet up from the dish. And let's move back in towards it. I am watching the drone, I promise. I'm not just staring at the camera and flying the drone blindly because that would be massively irresponsible. Okay. Then last one, I'm gonna take it up a little bit higher. And see if we can register anything. I'm not I'm not sure we will. I'm not sure. 
excited to see the results. It's a little bit different, gets me outside. It is absolutely freezing, to be fair. It's been frosty overnight. Anyway, this is not a weather channel. It's what we're talking about. Starlink and stuff. So that is mission complete. I'm gonna land the drone. Hopefully my audio wasn't too interrupted by the device flying around the sky. For those who are interested, the drone I used there was uh, an Autel Evo Pro 2, and it's, it's pretty nice, it's all right. It's better than the other companies' ones that I, I've flown numerous times in the trees. So, responsible, I'm a responsible drone pilot. Anyway, let's go back inside. Welcome back inside. I hope that was useful in some form or another. Yes, it wasn't massively scientific, but it just shows you that the possibility or the probability of a bird causing an obstruction is unlikely, unless it sits right on it. And I'm not landing my drone on top of the dish. So since my last video, we had that massive outage and it was after the launch. It was very tongue in cheek. That was just for fun really. And I, I, I put it together to try and generate laughs. However, some people took it really seriously and uh, reminded me that we're, we're in a beta and it will go down. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know it's gonna go down and I'm okay with that. As I've said all along, I've got another ISP and uh, I think the other ISP is gonna go soon. I'm, I'm feeling that, that confident in Starlink at the minute that it's time to move on. So here's my summary of Starlink ownership. I was so excited to get it and it seemed to be this worldwide interest in, in the system and what it was and how it performed. And I think it really appealed to me because I'm in a remote, relatively remote location and my broadband sucks it, it, it's rubbish it was rubbish so i chose to go with this beta program and it was expensive yeah i get that it costs quite a lot of money and it costs quite a lot of money per month now if we look at the speed tests whenever starling first arrived i've got them on screen now you're going to see a vast improvement and this is only over four weeks the setup was incredibly easy. Installing this thing was a piece of cake, apart from drilling a hole in a wall and somebody getting up on the roof and sticking it on the chimney. It really was very easy. In terms of connecting my own router, it was a case of disconnecting DES and sticking the ethernet in my current router and it picked it all up automatically because it's DCHP. And of course that possibly comes with its own restrictions, which I don't necessarily understand. I've said, and I'll say it again, I'm not massively technically minded or I'm not good with networking and stuff like that, but I find it very, very easy to set up. Speed and stability have improved dramatically. The, the speeds this morning, the lowest I think was 290 meg, the highest was maybe 360, 370. And that was after a firmware update overnight. And of course we have one of those obstructions pop up during that firmware update. Starting for me is a game changer and it is something that I'm, I'm loving. I'm really, I really enjoy the highs and lows of it. I enjoy the experience of it. I like being part of the community. It turns out there's this amazing community online that have this huge interest in Starlink. There's people asking questions from all across the world. There's people wanting to know, is this gonna change their connectivity where they live in rural areas? And the answer is yes, it will. It will change everything for you. It's much better than if you haven't got internet for a start. Well, it's, it's a massive leap forward. If you've got really poor cellular or really weak mobile signal, it's incredible and it will change how you communicate with the world. My summary is this, Starlink is great and I really enjoy it. I'm excited about the future of it and I cannot wait to see what happens over the next few months. So whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, have a good one and I will catch you later.
thank you so much for all the support that you've given me on this channel it's been it's been quite exciting to see it grow in the interest in Starlink and yeah I'm gonna have to change some things and maybe put some stuff to bed and focus more on the the tech and the internet and the, the kind of stuff that well I enjoy presenting so I'm gonna give my channel a little overhaul and hopefully bring you more of the content that you enjoy